Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, welcome to this devlog where I'm going to summarize the work we did on our app called Listed, which will be an app that allows users to create, share, and watch lists of YouTube channels. Now, uh, today was all about the user onboarding flow, um, but before that, we merged a couple of pull requests to the repo. So this first PR came from Barry, uh, and what they did was they just moved our Prisma instance from this file to a shared file. So now any file that needs access to the, the instance of the Prisma client can just import from this one file. So thanks to Barry for doing that. Uh, also, Cesar made a PR that will affect how you run this app locally if you do run it locally. Um, but ultimately, uh, the settings.json file, they wanted to be able to customize because they have some, own, their own, some of their own workspace settings that they want to set. So it made sense to uh, essentially uh, remove the settings.json from the repo and only include a default settings.json. So now whenever you pull this repo down, you're going to want to make sure that you copy default.settings.json into settings.json, very similar to how you copy your .env.sample into a .env. Uh, the contributing guide was also updated with uh, on why you need to, on how to do that. So uh, d definitely check out the contributing guide. And thanks to Cesar for making this point because essentially he wanted some custom workspace settings that didn't necessarily need to exist in the repo, which was good. Uh, this PR came from uh, Omar2205, and typically I don't accept PRs that are features because I want to work on features on stream, but this was pretty nice. Uh, and it also, if you look at the thread, uh, we were working out a bunch of ESLint issues, even with this small code change. Um, so it, it was a good exercise to, to do this off stream. Um, but they essentially added a nice little drop down uh, with the logout and a few other settings um, that we'll be able to populate later because before the the nav bar was a little bit bare so thanks to omar2205 for for doing that yeah so pr is short for pull request yeah um and then we got into working on some things so in terms of the onboarding flow whenever a user signs up with google or signs in with google when they get redirect back to back to our website we want to keep track of if they've completed the onboarding page and if they haven't, we want to redirect them there. Um, so part of that was to create some user settings for the users in our database. So we made some updates to our Prisma schema to include a user settings table. So now every user has user settings specified in the database. So this has this Boolean onboarded that specifies if the user has completed onboarding or not. Uh, we also have their color scheme. Um, so if they change the color scheme in the dropdown, we're going to persist that in the database. So if they log in on some other computer, we keep that color scheme. Uh, and then also the locale. And this was a big old rabbit hole. <laughs> um, but essentially, we're now storing the, lo the locale in the user setting. So eventually, we'll have uh, a profile page where the user can set their preferred locale. Because we detect the user's locale, like the, which is the language that they speak. Um, when they first visit the website, but if they want to change what that should be, they'll be able to set that in their settings. So uh, we also needed to set up uh, a place in our database to store all of the locales. Uh, now, this took a whole lot of time, but ultimately what we wanted to do was to have like a single source of truth in our database of all possible langu language locales, including country code, language code, and then uh, the type of script. Um, so we have this database table here for the locale, and then we have the user settings, which have a reference to a locale. To do that was pretty tricky. So uh, we, we did a lot of searching, and ultimately we found localeplanet.com. They had this really cool table with the language locales, the name, and the native name. Um, and so this is really nice because eventually in the UI, if somebody is choosing their language, uh, we want to show them the name of their language in uh, the language that they speak because uh, someone that speaks Spanish may not be able to understand uh, the English version of a language um, that they're trying to set. Uh, so um, uh, this table was really nice because it had all of that data. So basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to take all of this data, put it into our database as a lookup table. Um, so we wrote a, a quick little script to do that. I, I, I actually just wrote some code that can run inside of the console. Actually, I can show you this. So if we copy this code and I run it on this page, um, it gives us back this data, which is a JSON object representing all of this. Yeah, so LocalePlanet has uh, several APIs, but I couldn't find an API that had all of these columns in it which is why I did what I just did there. So basically I extracted all of that data as JSON 
and then uh, pulled that into my app. So now in the directory, there is a seeds directory and a data directory, and we have locales.json. So this literally has every possible locale in a JSON file, and then we wrote a database script to take this data and insert it into our database. Um, so at this point now, when you look inside of our database, we have 716 locales. We include the ID, the language code, the country code, and then whether or not it's a script. So like Latin, Cyrillic, there's also uh, Arabic. Um, and then we also include all of that other data, like the formal name and the native name. Um, so essentially, we wrote a little piece of code here in our seeds that reads in that JSON file and then iterates over it to turn it into the format that we want inside of our database. So we seed our database with all of those locales. And then when a user logs in for the first time, we use the detected locale to set on their user settings object. So this was a rabbit hole just figuring out the locales. But once we had that, we started working on the user onboarding flow as well. So next up was uh, being able to access those settings on the user session. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if you've if you've seen like just on the home page, uh, before we have this code right here that says if the user's session uh, is defined, then show the username on the home page, right? So this session is actually coming from auth.js and uh, we wanted to add some more properties to it because we wanted to get access to the settings object on session. So by default, uh, the session type uh, just has a user object and, and um, the user object just has these three properties, name, email, and image. But we wanted to extend that to also include the user ID and the user settings object. So this, this took quite a bit of work, but the first step was to update the types that are defined by auth.js. So if you look in the auth.js docs under TypeScript, they talk about how you can extend, um, but these docs haven't been updated yet because this is how you do it with next auth. Um, what you actually need to do is override this specific path right here. It took us a really long time to figure this out, and actually somebody in the chat helped us do it. But what that allowed us to do is in our directory, we now have a types folder and a types.d.ts, and we are specifically overwriting the session type for this module. And now we can tell it that when we come across a session, that user object is going to have an ID and is going to have a, set, a settings property. And then user settings is the, the type from our, our database that's generated by the Prisma client. Uh, and then similarly, our user object will have a settings property on it. So ultimately, we define it this way so that everywhere else in our app, we get really good type completion for the user session object. Um, and, it, and it, was, it was a bit of a, an effort to figure out how to exactly override this. But what that now allowed us to do is in our auth uh, handler that's defined in hooks.server, we can now take that session and, um, and, and put it onto the locals and use the extra properties uh, like user and settings. So specifically with uh, SvelteKit auth, uh, when you're, you can specify a callback for session. And this is where we attach on settings and ID. And you can see now TypeScript complains if it's missing those two properties because we updated the type to say, hey, it should have an ID and it should have settings. So now we do that. The other thing is we put the session on locals here. So anywhere else in our app, um, in, in any backend code that needs to access locals, the session is set here. So it's, it's ready to go in, in every route after this. The other thing you'll notice in this file is we're, do, we're doing some tricky stuff here, mainly because we wanted to access the event from the uh, handler itself. So normally when you look in the auth.js docs, you'll see that we're just directly exporting this, but essentially I wanted to be able to access that event inside of my SvelteKit auth callbacks. So we essentially wrap it in a function and then invoke it with those arguments. Uh, so we essentially get access to the same event that SvelteKit auth gets access to, but that allows us to do things like this. The other piece of the user onboarding flow is if this is the first time we've ever seen the user, we need to create that settings row in our database. So if you if you remember back to our schema, we have our uh, our user object, and then we also have our user settings. And by default, there are no user settings for a user that has to actually be created. So we handle that in the create user event of SvelteKit auth. So when a user is created, we find the locale in the database. So again, remember we, we seeded the database with all of these locales. 
the user gets created. We know what their locale is because we're detecting it based on the request that comes in. And we just need to tie that back to a locale that actually exists on, in our database. So we find that locale. If we didn't find it, then they set it to something weird. So we're just going to default to English US. Um, and then we create a user settings object in the database. So now that newly created user also has settings and they have their locale set to their initial value. The other piece of this is in order to get these settings onto the, the user and have access to them right here, we actually needed to create a custom database adapter. So uh, if you look in the auth.js docs, they have a default Prisma adapter, but we wanted to modify the queries for when it's looking up users. So we essentially created a custom one. So big thanks to Kubajaro because they showed us how to do this. Essentially, we pulled in the Prisma adapter from next auth Prisma adapter, and we created our own custom version with a couple of functions that we needed to override. So we essentially grab all of the existing methods, and then the things that we wanted to override were to include the settings in the user query. So whenever auth.js is looking up the user in our database, we want to include the settings so it's all done in a single query. So we've overridden get user, get user by email, get user by account, get session and user, so that the settings are included in that query. And ultimately, when we get back the user here, it has settings populated. So that was one more thing we had to do. And essentially what we did is we just defined in our lib folder the Prisma adapter that... Uh, overrides those specific functions. So we are getting some type errors. We're just TS ignoring them for now. We do want to fix these type errors. And ultimately it has to do with the return types defined in that adapter uh, type right there. So now when a user is created, we have access to the settings that create got created for that new user on the session object. And we can use that everywhere else in our app. So at this point, the, the goal was to redirect the user to the right place, depending on their current user state. Um, so let's actually look what happens when we log in. So if I click sign up with YouTube, I click here, we get redirected back to the app, but you'll notice that we get re redirected to slash onboarding. And that's because in the database uh, for the newly created settings, the value for onboarded defaults to false. So because this is a new user and onboarding is false, we can go to, uh, take a look in the database. So if we look at user settings, we can see right there onboarding is false. So we're looking at that to make sure that if they haven't been onboarded, we redirect them to the onboarding page. So to do this, we're actually using the route groups feature of SvelteKit uh, so that anything we put in this folder called protected uh, is now in a group called protected and we can match against it right here. So right now we only have one route, which is onboarding. And that is inside of the protected routes. But what that allows us to do is uh, this right here. So uh, if there is no session, meaning the user is not logged in and they are attempting to visit a route in the protected group, redirect back to the home page. So this is the uh, top level hooks that run for every single request. And essentially, if someone is trying to go to a route in that protected folder, it's going to immediately redirect them back to the home page. So that's step one. Uh, basically, if you're not logged in and you try to go to onboarding, we're going to take you right back to the home page. And we can demonstrate that here. So if I log out, and I try to go to slash onboarding, that redirects me back to the home page, and that's this logic right here. Okay, so that's the first step in, in authorization, but let's say the user, it does have a session. So if the user does have a session, meaning they are logged in, then it's gonna go on to, in this case, the layout server file, which here we're determining where we should send the user. So we have some, some more nested logic in here. So if the session exists and the user settings property onboarded uh, is false, then we're going to redirect to onboarding because if, if the onboarded property, uh, if you remember in our database, that's this property right here. If that is false, we want to go to the onboarding route. So we redirect them there if we were already not going there. Uh, one thing I want to point out really quick is using route.id. Uh, this is actually really cool because you get type completion for all of the routes in your app. So you'll notice right here, um, if I try to redirect the user to like slash banana or something like that, I'm going to get a TypeScript error that says, hey, that's not a valid route in your app. Uh, so this is really cool because um, it's not just a, a random string. You are going to get type completion to say, hey, it needs to be a valid route. So if we're not going to onboarding and we haven't onboarded yet, redirect to onboarding. Um, if the user does exist and we have onboarded and we're not on the home page, redirect to the home page. So we have this redirect logic in here. And that ultimately is what takes us to this page when the user logs in. So let's think about that one more time. The user logs in, 
the when I click this hooks.server runs, there is a session, then layout.server runs. Uh, the user onboard setting is false, so we get redirected to onboarding. Great. And so now this is the user onboarding. So far, it's super basic. We don't have any customization. We were just trying to get the whole flow working. So there's no customization. Uh, but when the user clicks let's go, that updates their onboarded setting in the database. So right now it's false. But when I click go, uh, that's going to update in the database. And we did that with a form action here. So this is the onboarding page. And this button submits the form with a post request. But in SvelteKit, there's this concept of actions. So in the page server file right next to that component, uh, we define our actions. And the default action is for post. So when the user submits this form, it's going to hit this action, and we handle it. So right now, we have a guard to see um, if the user isn't logged in. Just go back to the home page. Ultimately, we should really never hit this because of the other redirects we've already set up. Uh, essentially, a user can never get to this onboarding page if they're not logged in. But this is just a cautionary thing. And it helps with TypeScript because TypeScript complains that this could be undefined. So we're just making sure if you're not logged in, you shouldn't be in here. Otherwise, we update onboarded to true in our database and then redirect to the home page. There, there's other settings we potentially want to set. Like I said, right now, the, the page is very simple. Uh, eventually, we'll allow the user to maybe customize their username or customize the avatar, other things like that. But for now, we're just setting onboarded to true. And so when I click this button, that updates in the database, and now we get redirected back to the home page. But uh, according to that same logic that I showed you, now that I am onboarded, if I try to go to onboarding, I just get redirected back to the home page, which is what we want. So uh, took quite a bit of work. So we learned a ton. I mean, we, we dug into uh, AuthJS and SvelteKit Auth. Uh, we learned a lot about these handlers. Um, we learned a lot about form handling. We did quite a bit in, in this episode. Um, so thank you for watching this. Um, Coding Garden is supported by viewers like you. If you would like to support me, here are all the ways you can do that. If you visit coding.garden slash support, it has links to all of the ways that you could support me. And I really would appreciate it, uh, especially if you got some use out of this video. All right, that's it for this devlog. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, definitely tune in every Friday on Twitch, twitch.tv slash coding garden. We're working on this exact same app. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.